Dave, it seems almost uh, conventional wisdom, particularly in Silicon Valley, that we'll be eventually able to achieve uh, uh, an AI singularity where intelligence is much more than human uh, uh, intelligence. And by force, that will be conscious. And corollarily, uh, that we will be able to upload our brains, our consciousness, the two are delighted together into other non-biological media, whatever, at the, at the time. Uh, but both of these questions depend on the cause, the fundamental aspect of consciousness. So how do you view those two things? AI singularity, will it be conscious? And is it possible to upload our consciousness, our real personal first person consciousness? Well, I think these are really important issues. I did my PhD in an artificial intelligence lab, but I've always been very sympathetic to the prospects for artificial intelligence and also artificial consciousness. I mean, one starting point here is you know, the brain looks like a big complicated machine. It's a complicated physical system with physical dynamics. We ought eventually to be able to simulate it really well right. on a computer, simulate the brain well enough, and presumably you'll have a computational robot-like machine that could simulate my behavior and at the very least it'll be acting intelligently it'll be talking like me and so on um that then raises the question if that's possible will that simulated system mm -hmm. be conscious i'm inclined to think yes that the, I mean, it really turns on whether there's a fundamental difference here between say brain biology and things like silicon chips in playing this role in generating behavior, and we can come at this through the thought experiment. If you think about replacing the neurons one, one at a time by prosthetic neurons made of silicon, just say I replace 10% of my brain with silicon chips. Well, well, what we'll happened to my time, conscious? Yeah, said. do it. Do it one at a time and keep going and keep going. Then each one is a perfect replica of that one neuron. Yeah. And it interconnects yeah, with the right, other ones right, in the perfect right, way. Right. So the, behaviorally, the systems will be conscious throughout. And someone just says that the silicon system isn't conscious, they're going to have to say either somewhere along the way consciousness blinks out, or somehow consciousness is going to gradually fade away during that series. And the more you think about that, the more it doesn't really make sense. I think it starts to make a whole lot more sense to say, I am going to be here conscious throughout. So uh, really, there are only three alternatives that consciousness can wink out like yep. a step function, yep. which seems illogical. Yep. It can gradually fade. Or it can be there. I yeah. mean, no other choices, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm inclined to think the most plausible one okay. is it's going to okay. be there. The other alternatives are just problematic. I can't prove that they're so, wrong. So you in your first person, I'm not talking about the externality, the third person. I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Your girlfriend, your wife wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Your psychiatrist couldn't tell the difference if you have one. But inside, are you the same you? Then that's only a first person decision. So you're saying even that first person feeling, your internal feeling, will continue with the neuron replacement one by one. I think this actually bears on the question of uploading that you mentioned. You, know, sure, you say I want sure. to upload my mind into a computer. I think as long as you do it gradually and replace the neurons one by one, then it's going to be like kind of getting prosthetic limbs or artificial heart. Yeah, you're going to be replacing parts of me, but I'm going to be present throughout. And I think I could even stay conscious. Throughout. And this is your first person sense, not the third yeah. person observation of you, but your internal sense. Where it gets really tough is when you, I stay here, you record my brain onto a computer, and you create a duplicate of me over there, which then kind of gets activated and gets woken this up. This is the problem. Now, now we, if that one neuron that we keep replacing in your brain, if I made one, I can make two. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I put, I take my first neuron, I put it in your brain, take out a neuron, you're fine, yeah. I have one neuron here. Yeah. Then I put two, I put two here, the exact yeah. same process. And at the end, I have a hundred billion in you, and I have a hundred billion you got, here. You got a silicon guy here, and you got a brain guy here, and yeah. they're going to start fighting and yeah. say, yeah. "Well, who gets the who, get, who gets the house? You know, who gets the money? Who gets the yeah, the, the partner?" But but but. but um, what is the you know, those questions are will be legal questions that a future yeah. law will have to deal with i'm not i'm not concerned about it. i'm concerned about the internal feeling yeah will that will that other brain be, be a twin will it be like your twin like my people talk about cloning cloning is like a twin it's no, yeah. no different if i take a, a a cell of mine and you can clone it and clone it to be a person be like i had a twin brother it just happened later in life there's no difference but here, there is a difference because this is this internal sense of, uh, of my consciousness.
So what you're saying is if your consciousness will remain replacing neuron after neuron, what about this other entity that I have here? I think there's two questions really. One is, will it have the same kind of consciousness as me? And second, will it be me? So I think to the first question, I say yes. yes. I think you're going to have two roughly duplicate beings here with roughly right. the same kind of stream of consciousness. That seems perfectly fine to me. But then the second question is why not about consciousness, but about personal identity. Which one is me? Or if I was here beforehand, if there's two is, later, which one is me? And, and if they're exactly the same physically, because that yeah. was the precondition that we're putting in the thought, yeah. exactly the same, how could it not be? And if it's not, what's the difference? It could be like a twin of me. You know, you could make a twin of me <laughs> um, in the next... Uh, in the next room without me knowing about this or they're over on yeah, someone, but, someone down in the valley right now is making it yeah. maybe they made it during this conversation and it's just yeah. waking up well that's fine but it's not the same person as me philosophers say it might be qualitatively identical to me but it's not numerically identical to me okay but in terms of your inner sense that you have right now you have your personal yeah. sense you, you have if that other brain is created whether it's uploaded or made here by the same neurons that are replacing you remember we've replaced every neuron in yeah. your head now and you're feeling the same yeah you don't feel any different replaced every neuron but i then secretly i didn't tell you yeah. every one that i replaced in your brain yeah. i made into another brain right here so i think we have two beings two conscious beings both of which have that sense of self, both of which okay. remember being me, okay. both of which identify with that original being. But, not but there is still a further question, which one is me? But they're not fused. Yeah, they're not fused. There's two qualitatively identical but numerically distinct beings. Just as I can and have a twin have brother independent who's physically just like me, I could have a mental twin brother with consciousness just like me. But if they both have exactly the same, on, on, on nanosecond one, exactly the same physical structure, and, and if consciousness is entirely dependent upon that exact physical structure, how can that consciousness not be the same? I think it's like having two tables, which are qualitative duplicates, but one table is not the same as another. Likewise, I've got one consciousness here, another consciousness there. It's two people having exactly the same state of consciousness, numerically distinct, but qualitatively the same. Duplicate consciousness. If that doesn't make sense. <laughs> To you then so would you uh, at the end of a long and healthy life if you were offered the opportunity to be uploaded uh, wh what do you do if it's my only alternative to biological death then absolutely i'm gonna do it if it's like just a convenient way of getting from point a to point b maybe it's a way of getting a bit quicker to mars for <laughs> example i'd at least think twice about it because i think there's a philosophical risk here is the up, I'm pretty sure the uploaded person is going to be conscious. I'm not completely confident it's going to be me. It depends on how you do the uploading. But if you upload me gradually, then that's probably the safest way to do but it. But we just talked about the uploading or my creating another brain here is exactly the same. There's you no might difference. be creating someone who's just like me, but right, who's not right, me. And right. I say, course. great for them. I'm right. glad that I've got right. this twin brother, but that's not so helpful. And the twin brother if it's can not be... me, then that's not so helpful for me. So if I'm being selfish, I say I care about me, not my consciousness twin. And the consciousness twin can be a physical thing right here, or it could be just uh, information on, on a, a, another medium. Yeah. It, it, it's exactly the same. But if it's not you, it's it's not you. Yeah, well, I mean, I think it's, look, as far as I'm concerned, I'd rather have Do you think a, it's possible to be you? I think it's possible. Like, one thing I think is that maybe all of these beings have an equal claim to being me, and if you create a duplicate of me... No, they have a claim, then, of course, yeah. but I'm talking about your inner sense. Will you yeah. feel now you're in two parts and you can see two different... Uh, no, no, that's not going to happen. Each of them is going to feel like a unified consciousness. None of them is going to see outside Why are you so the other one's eyes. That? Why is there a, you, why is gonna there be, a merger? They're going to be functionally just like me, and they're going to be saying, I am here, there's only one of me. Yeah, yeah. And so on. the other one's going to be saying that. Right. On your view, they're going to be internally feeling, oh my God, there's 75 of me. But the whole time they're saying there's just one of me. That, right. that, that doesn't really make sense to me. That's incoherent. But if, yeah. if, if you think that this, this, uh, uh, bio, this, 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 this uh, non-biological brain that we've created with every neuron that went into your head, we duplicated, is, uh, is like a twin, which I agree with. How can you then have a greater confidence that when we upload you, that it will really be you? Isn't it the same thing? I'm confident it will be a twin. I'm not confident it will be me. I think maybe it will be me. Do you have any difference of confidence in the upload and, and to the duplicate that we've made on the side here? I've got roughly the same. Is the it same, roughly the, or exactly? The, the, the same confidence. Is it exactly? 
nothing is exactly oh, the same. Okay. But I, don't I just can't corner you. Roughly <laughs> the same. Yeah, the fact that one is biological and one is computational, well, maybe maybe she's just a little bit more confident about yeah. the biology because it's a little bit more like me, but I'm pretty confident they'll both be conscious. But will they be me? For that, I think we need a theory of the self, and I don't have one yet.